Okay, hopefully that's enough time that it's uh, started to uh, broadcast. Um, welcome and good morning or good afternoon, depending on whereabouts in the world uh, you're tuning in from, or good evening if you're on the other side as well. Um, welcome to the uh, Ask the Experts on Trimble Access and TBC session. Um, this was something that we decided to run out of uh, the Australia, New Zealand region based on some interest from the distributors and customers. And we've decided to take it to the global audience to see what sort of interest we had in this type of session. Uh, my name is Stephen Shepherd. I'll be chairing this session today and hopefully um, getting the questions to the right people that we've assembled for the session today. Um, so we are not a, entirely just a, a Trimble um, based contingent today. We've got some representatives from the distribu distribution partner in New Zealand, from Altera New Zealand, from UPG in the eastern states of Australia, and also HL Geospatial in Western Australia. To do a quick introduction, um, so as I mentioned, my name's Steve Shepherd. Uh, I work as a geospatial solution specialist uh, for Trimble in the Asia Pacific and China region. And my area is to assist the distributors um, with technical sales and anything else that comes up as well, um, mainly with uh, Australia and New Zealand as the focus. Um, we've got, uh, and as we're sort of going through this, if you can start to pump your questions in through the little uh, questions window, then once we get through an intro for everybody, we'll get to answering them. Um, so I've been with Trimble for about uh, 15 months and prior to that was working with the distributor in at UPG in the eastern states of Australia and have been involved in surveying for about uh, about 15 years now, 16 years uh, in different forms. So uh, hopefully we're able to, to answer a lot of your questions today. Um, what I'll do, I'll just take down this page um, and be able to stop my screen sharing. Screen sharing's paused. Now. Can we see webcams? Have we still got webcams coming up there? Right. Looks like your screen is still shared, Chip. Okay, uh, I'll try to stop. Yeah, stop sharing, and hopefully, um, if that stops, are people now getting the? Um, still got your screen? Has that disappeared now? Yes. Yeah, okay. that's good. Has it flicked, reverted back to um, our uh, webcams? Yeah, it appears to. Yep. Okay. So, um, just in no particular order, um, I'll flick over to Neil. If you unmute and just do a quick intro on yourself. Um, Neil Harvey from Trimble. Hi, uh, this is Neil Harvey. I don't have the pleasure of a webcam appearing because these six guys got in first. Um, I started with Trimble support 20 years ago. Uh, before that, I was a seismic surveyor in Australia and uh, I spent uh, 12 years working with Trimble support. I moved to uh, the Perth distributor for five years. Um, so that's where Gareth's currently working. And then I've been back at Trimble support for the last three years. So um, 20 last 20 years has all been related to Trimble support. Uh, uh, for dealer and for Trimble. Uh, it's been great fun. So uh, that's me. Okay, um, we'll run it through just starting starting in New Zealand and then across uh, through. Uh, I'll go to James next and uh, James McGuire from Trimble. If you can just unmute and do a quick intro. Yeah, I think I am unmu unmuted. Yeah. Um, yes, yeah, so I am the, yeah, the, uh, the geospatial support regional manager for the APAC region, uh, excluding China. 
Um, I've been at Trimble for, well, this is my 25th year, I think. Um, uh, prior, I've been in support for the, the last sort of six or seven years. Um, prior to that, I was with the Trimble Access Group as a um, application specialist, uh, so it's mainly specialising in the tunnels and roads areas. Um, but yeah, we're sort of covering most of Trimble a Access as a whole. Um, I'm a yeah, New Zealand surveyor uh, of about well, 30 plus years experience, mainly with cadastral prior to coming to, to Trimble. Okay, thanks James. Um, next up in New Zealand is Damien McRae. Uh, he works for Altera New Zealand. Take it away, Damien. Yeah, thanks, Shep. Yeah, um, yeah as, uh, as you know, my name's Damien and I'm working for Altera New Zealand based on the uh, North Island at the moment. Um, probably sort of more specialising in the, the, the laser scanning tools than, than anything else for the uh, customers here in this region. Uh, prior to working at Altera, uh, I worked as an underground mine surveyor in Tasmania. Um, so it might not be uh, of much help with any uh, GPS related questions come in, uh, but uh, maybe anything underground I can, might be able to help out with. Okay, thanks Damien. Um, all right, uh, Kerry from, uh, from based out of Melbourne, uh, if you unmute and give us an intro Kerry. Maybe, Kerry? No, I'll jump to Ross instead. Oh, yeah. oh no, I, he's unmuted. Go, Kerry. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Kerry Best. I am the technical support for the UPG, the distributor in Melbourne. I've been working for UPG for about two and a half years. Prior to that, I've been a surveyor for 25, 30 years, mainly around the UK. Um, that's my lot. Okay, uh, Ross, can you do a quick intro on yourself? Hi, I'm Ross. I um, work at UPG in Melbourne. I'm specialising as a technical consultant with uh, Office Software. Um, I used to work for Trimble for 11 years before this uh, in product management and also product support for a product called Quantum um, and also a little bit of TBC. Uh, I've also worked for LizCAD and in the sales role there. And um, before that, I was a uh, field surveyor. So uh, I've been sort of around the traps and um, yeah. Okay, thank you. And uh, lastly, uh, Gareth, if you can unmute and give us a quick intro on yourself. Sure, thanks, Shep. Good morning, all. Uh, my name is Gareth Piercy. And I work with uh, HL Geospatial. We are the Western Australia dealer for Trimble. Um, my background is, sorry, my position to start with is the senior tech consultant, similar to Ross, but for the west side of Australia. Um, my background is mining. I've done uh, 12, 12 good years of flying flyouts and a lot of the Pilbara, seems some places around Western Australia. Um, I also like playing golf and making beer and probably do both as badly as each other. Thanks. Okay, thanks everybody. Um, so we will uh, get stuck into uh, some of the questions. Uh, the initial one, um, if I pushed through to Neil, um, have you had a think about that one? Do you think we can answer that one um, on the fly, Neil? No, I, don't, I haven't used TerraModel for years. Um, I think we might have to look at that one offline, unless yep, Ross can okay. answer it with his uh, TerraModel knowledge. <laughs> Um, uh, I'll, I'll, no, I'll I, the uh, I, so you can see it as well, Ross. Um, I did but we're going to have to have this one off uh, a little bit, a little bit more straightforward. Um, so this next one is how can we create alignment and key it in? Um, and I would guess that this one is uh, related to Trimble access and keying in alignments in the in the field software. Um, do you want me to? Uh, do you want me to answer that? Yeah, yeah, if you can jump into that and just uh, roughly go through where it sits in there and how to, to do it. Um, and okay, maybe well, currently you could relate it to, you need to have general points. Right. Yeah, so to key in an alignment, you need it needs to be based on points. So you'd basically, either the points would need to be linked or or in, in, the, in the job database 
and you would just list the points in the order that you want to you want them the, the alignment to go through. Alternatively, you can select the points from the map in the order that you want the, the alignment to go. And then if you tap and hold in the map after selecting the points, you can you can store that as an alignment or stake it out as an alignment. Um, other ways you can use an alignment, if you've got like a DXF file with polylines in it, you can have that as an active map file and you can select the polyline from the map again and stake it out as an alignment. Okay, hopefully that answers it. Yes, so for um, keying in the alignment, any um, through general survey, yep, selecting on the map screen, once that alignment's actually keyed in visible on the map, then it should just be a case of selecting and um, and also uh, just choosing to stake out. Um, you do have a lot more alignment controls in uh, Trimble Access Rogues module, and that allows you to create uh, templates as well as um, so having an alignment um, string coming down and through, and then also, um, uh, I guess you can see me on the screen as well, um, a template of what the road is. Um, so you can have cross falls, cross slopes, um, and and things around it as well, and vertical um, profiles input in there. So it does give you a lot more control around doing that uh, also. Okay. Um, I think we should have answered that pretty thoroughly. Um, and this is a bit of a test run. So this, uh, I didn't mention at the start, we usually run this at Dimensions and uh, it's a bit of a first go round for running it online. So we'll, we'll wait and see if it's a success or not. Um, so uh, the next one I've got here, I can't export a TBC job directly to my TSC2 via Trimble, uh, via Trimble Access. Specifically, the TBC job that has a site calibration. I can export it to the TBC file folder and then copy it to the survey controller, but that defeats the access workflow. Please help. Um, so this, uh, I might need a little bit more information on this. Um, I'm not sure if that's possible to feed more information in, but uh, is it trying to use the access sync workflow? If David can, uh, Put through an additional question. I'll just uh, keep an eye on that. Um, you won't get access sync on TSE two. So no, um, it does say TSE two and um, three. So um, I'm not quite sure if he, on the three he's trying sync or if it's um, related to be mobile just... to map device manager. Um, mm. I mean there are issues with Windows ten and mobile device manager. Um, if you if you're running Trimble Access and you run um, Trimble Installation Manager on your device, it should actually set up at the registry settings so that you can connect to a Windows 10 PC via Windows Mobile Device Manager. Um, that should let, once you've done that, you should be able to upload from TBC to directly to a um, Trimble Access controller like a, like a TSC2. Yep, yeah. okay, yeah. Um, once we get a bit more information in there, uh, we might circle back around to that one um, just to, to find out a bit more. Um, so we've got one here. I've assigned it to you, Neil, just uh, if if you've had a quick flick through. So um, someone's asking about the difference between the roving precisions when you're in the survey styles and the different when you actually go to topo point um, and have a look in, in there also. Um, did you want to? Have a crack at that one. I'm actually just going to jump into the emulator and just clarify what the values we're talking about are. So for a topo point, the survey style has auto tolerance set off or on. Hang on, and if we jump into, was it rapid point? Uh, no, it was that there are. Let me come back again. The difference between roving precision setting in settings survey styles rover options and the precision setting in settings survey styles topo point. So I'm just bringing up access uh, on my screen as well, just to have a quick look. Uh, TKA rover options. 
running precision and and he was asking about topo point. No tolerance. That dreaded uh, quiet. Yeah, sorry, my program's crashed and I can't see what you've got <laughs> there. Okay. Hey, this is a new one on me. I've never seen this. This uh, I've seen. I mean, I've seen it in Topo Point before, but this is the first time I've seen the roving precision in the actual rover options of the survey style. So I'll just have a quick yeah. look up and see what I can find on it. Now oh, you've stumped us already. Uh, precision and roving precision. Uh, so. There's a, there's a question one sort of, of them, targeted around. Uh, I think one of them, the topo point is uh, made specific for when you're actually trying to observe a topo point. Um, within rover options, that's just acting, uh, what I can quickly assess here, as um, a more general tolerance um, when it's it's not um, engaged in an actual um, point measurement to flag just in the screen at the top of the window that um, it is or isn't within um, any defined value and um, will be giving you a cross or a tick um, before you actually initiate a measurement. Um, but we'll just, uh, as the guys have a quick look at that, um, we might go down through. It's possibly linked to the poor precisions warning that you get. Um, like you're not necessarily measuring a point, but if it's outside those um, values, you'll probably get a poor precisions warning. There's a little mm. sort of uh, sound event that um, will sound while you're you're in in a survey. Whereas yeah, that the, was my take on it. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas the other one is when you come to store a point, um, yeah, it will warn you if it's outside the those tolerances. Now, normally they're set to auto tolerance, which is based on it'll be based on the the length of your baseline and I think the the various you know, PDOP um, settings. Um, but you can set values in there if you if you turn that off, you can actually set um, particular values. Okay, um, we'll we'll double check that, but that's my take on it as well. Is that one's a more broad um, change across the entire survey, and one is specific to the um, to the point measurement at the time and depending on which you're in at the time, we'll flag those uh, those warnings. Um, okay, so the next one we have in here, um, we've got a question from Richard. He's saying, I had a job file in Trimble Access where the battery went dead. My survey style wasn't set the way I expected. And after the battery died, I ended up with some of the rod heights being from bottom of quick release and some from bottom of antenna mount. I couldn't find a way to select multiple observations and change the correct measurement. So um, in access or TBSB, I expect this would be possible, but unable to figure out how. Um, through access, uh, this would not be possible to do a bulk um, uh, selection of all of the, the rod um, heights and to change it, but through Trimble Business Center, you should be able to utilize, it's called the vector spreadsheet. Um, this is a, a spreadsheet format that will come up on the screen um, and it outlines all of the observations, all of the vectors and along the top ribbon of that spreadsheet, uh, you're able to apply filters and you should be able to filter everything that is related to bottom of antenna mount and then um, select all of those. So just uh, click, uh, do a shift click so that they all become active and then bring up the properties and you'll be able to make a bulk uh, change through the properties and see everything in the vector spreadsheet should update that way. Um, does that uh, sound reasonable to the other, the other uh, panelists? Yep. Yep, okay. Yeah, so as you said, there's something on this on the power hour, yes, uh, the other week about common field errors. Yeah, that, that's how I do it. You always how I do it. You can also do it in the Project Explorer. 
you could select bulk points, right click properties, and you can edit bulk, yeah, bulk properties as you suggested, but your way is probably the way I'd do it. Yep. And just to confirm, there's not a way of doing it in Trimble Access that anyone knows that no, I can do one by one. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah, very uh, painful. So yeah. job you'd be <laughs> clicking down through each of them and coming through um, and changing them um, on a point by point basis. Um, so we've got another one from Richard. How do you edit raw data collector? Uh, raw data collector data is this possible? Um, so I think this relates to actually making um, changes to the observation itself. Um, Ross, I ping this to you as the respondent, but um, yeah, did you want to have a crack? There's data that comes in, and you can certainly in TBC edit data based on um, certain parameter sets. So you can edit uh, things that you would normally input. So instrument height, uh, the reflector type, the point ID even, and also the, um, the feature code. You can edit those in TBC. They're done in the home tab. Um, when you go along the top in the home tab, there's a data section of the home tab. And in there, there's a points and an optical button, the points will give you a point spreadsheet, which is a point ID, easting, northing, elevation and feature code. And the optical one is for um, things like um, the instrument type, the instrument heights, sorry, the, yeah, and those sorts of things. Um, anything that's in blue in those is editable. Anything that is in grey, that is grey is not editable. And then when I say something's not editable, it basically means that you, it's a it's a shot that's taken in the field. So we can't edit something that is physically measured in the field because that was a physical measurement. PVC tries to retain data integrity, so therefore we don't want we don't let you edit that component. So um, that's sort of where I'm assuming that question's going. Please ask a follow up question if that's not the answer to your question. Um, I also looked at the um, L section question. Uh, I did send a response back. I'm pretty sure that the case here is that TBC just doesn't let you do that at this stage. Um, you, there's a lot of functionality that's in Terra model that still needs to be shifted across. Most of that's in macros currently. So those macros will probably be shifted across to TBC at some stage. We just need to, as a whole group, prioritize this, but we will take that back to the team and see how we go. Yeah, so um, just in, in closing off from Ross's response, um, anything that you would classify as, I guess, raw observation data, uh, we don't allow an edit to, um, just to maintain the integrity of the survey. So if you've taken an observation um, with RTK and you've got a vector coming in from the base to that point, um, you're not able to modify that vector. Um, once you bring it into TBC, there is an override to say shift a survey point which will um, allow the vector to be disabled and it will actually allow you to move the point, but you are then um, just effectively moving a point on screen and the, the vector itself still remains in its true location, still unadulterated. Um, so we, we try to maintain uh, all observations as true um, to what they were. Okay, uh, the next one we have here from Thomas is, can I use the Trimble SX10 on the Guido rail trolley? Um, there's a, a, the, in short, no, we, um, we currently don't support the SX10 um, through Guido and um, because it's a relatively niche instrument and probably the trolley is a relatively niche also, um, the uh, the demand hasn't been there for this requirement so far. Um, as we keep evolving and the SX10 um, um, sits in the portfolio, um, if we get a lot of requests for this type of instrument uh, where people are, are doing a mixture of work, then uh, I guess that will be taken on board as a development request. Um, if you want to ping a, like a little bit of an additional bit of information I can follow up on later. Are you looking at um, which which part of the Guido portfolio are you looking at? Is it Guido track or is it something like Guido Borsus? Um, 
because they are quite different pieces of software and, and workflows. Um, and that might change uh, whether it would ever be implemented in that way. Um, hopefully that answers that one. I don't think anyone else is probably uh, too knowledgeable around the Guido stuff. Maybe you, Kerry, but more in the GNSS space sometimes. I don't, don't think we need to touch that one further. Uh, okay, I've got the next question here. I might. Uh, hang on, I'll push this to uh, Neil. I think this is something that you might have had a look at before. Um, and just have a quick look at. Uh, and as I do this, um, so the question is with respect to RTK with logging and performing surveys with RTK and logging. What are the implications of simply changing the coordinates of the PRS reference station from GDA 94 to GDA 2020 coordinates and recalculating in TBC? Um, so this, uh, I would say, relates to our current ongoing changes from the older Datum in Australia, which is uh, the Geocentric Datum Australia 1994. And over the last couple of years, we've been migrating to Geocentric Datum Australia of 2020. And as such, there's a lot of uh, interest in how to best shift some of this survey information from one coordinate system to another. Um, I, yeah, have at it, Neil, and push it back to me if you, if you want. <laughs> I think it's a question we've seen a lot of and all the dealers on screen will have fielded a lot of questions like this but in the moment at the moment Trimble Business Centre has a GDA 94 coordinate system or datum and it has a GDA 2020 but the way that Trimble is currently working with the coordinate system manager they have the same datum transformation parameters so changing from 94 to 2000 will not see a change of coordinates but in this case, it sounds like the user has got a base coordinate in 94. If he types in an updated coordinate that represents the 2020 coordinate, let's say it's changing by 1.5 or two meters, the vectors are added to the new coordinate and new grid coordinates for all the RTK positions will be computed after a recompute is done. So I think that's where that question's going. So yeah, that sounds you, like how I would also do it. Um, so within TBC, if you um, if you right click on the on the actual base station and choose to add coordinate, you can update that uh, coordinate. And if you set it within the hierarchy to control um, and potentially even disable the other control um, that's coming in there just to make sure that you are 100% getting the, the 2020 position that you want. If you're overriding that with the 2020 coordinate from one of the government authorities, then what you'll see is just a block shift. And because the, um, the reference station should be relatively contained within that area, then we shouldn't need to worry about um, the distortions occurring within 2020, it will just be a conformal shift of translating down um, into that new location. And it's relatively small, uh, sub two meter shift. And that's applicable to, to many of the, uh, the shifts that are occurring with updated uh, reference frames. Okay. Um, so uh, the next one, hopefully that answers that. Next one. Have you seen any problems with new Trimble access, uh, TSC7 and the S7? Customer saw a delay in how fast the point was stored. The coordinate was stored in the wrong location. Um, I haven't seen anything that would uh, create any further delays between um, between the TC7, New Trimble Access and the S7. Um, we still use the same communications um, present. Um, I'll ask James and Neil, um, through your work with the, the global services team and, and supporting the distributors, have you recognised or seen anything that would uh, suggest we, there's any we need to see the data. delays? So, yeah, I would yeah, contact your local dealer and send them the job. Actually, even better would be to send the entire Trimble data folder in case so we get all your files like any linked files 
uh, background maps, steward models, et cetera. And um, also it will give us some log data as well. So send that to your dealer, explain exactly what you did, and then he'll forward it on to support who will then work with um, development to see if, see if we can work out what's happening. Um, yeah, we haven't, it's not, it's not an own issue. And yeah, we certainly, um, it's not something which we, you know, we could give a workaround or until we actually see the data. Yeah, yeah. Um, seems very, very unusual to have actually stored a coordinate in the wrong location. Um, not something that I've seen. Uh, I was just out um, probably, uh, I don't know, a week ago uh, using an S9 with TSC7 and was performing as uh, as what I'd expected it to. Um, and they're um, effectively using all the same things that a TSC7 and an S7 would be utilising um, and um, taking the video feed as well um, across. And so in terms of bandwidth being consumed, um, it was using most of what's available and wasn't having any problems there. Uh, we'll jump down to the next question now. Um, so, um, James, I've pushed this to you to have a think about because um, you might have some understanding with your work you've involved in in roads. Will Trimble roads ever have the ability to stake out two strings at once? Um, master string at the same time as, say, a right string. Um, this that sounds reasonably complex for actually uh, being able well, to... Well, it'll always refer back here. to the master string. So, um, and there are certain, there's certain um, things you can do like uh, uh, cross-sloping where you can get, um, so cro cross-sloping is where you've, you're, you'd be staking a string on one side of the road, but then you're projecting the basically the surface of the road across, so you would actually get two two cut fill values um, but yeah we'd re once again we need to see more de more details um, staking I mean you yeah like I say you, you get the master string you'll get the station and offset relative to your master string but and you'll also get the sort of the go you know go left go right uh, go forward back uh, in terms of the, the current string that you're staking out um, so um, yeah I'm not sure if that's answering that question. If there's a particular sort of um, workflow or scenario that you can sort of provide us, we might be able to get give some more details or possibly log it as an enhancement request. Yeah, um, um, you can do is some you can of the... stake out another another alignment if need need be. So that's reporting the station and offset from that other alignment. Yeah, yeah. No, I'd um, I'd see this as a as a a bit more of a development as well. So Pete, um, that's lodged the question. Um, I'll, I know who you are, so I'll track back with you and find out what the workflow is a bit more specifically that requires it, and um, and we'll get someone involved on a call with you. Um, okay, so the next one, um, is there any available channel um, on YouTube potentially that could help with tutoring a customer on how to use TBC and Trimble Access. Um, now, this one for TBC, um, our YouTube channel, which is now called the Survey and Construction um, Channel, um, after version five, we merged the two. Uh, that has a significant amount of information for TBC. Um, at the moment, there is currently being run from the construction division um, quite a lot of training. Um, Ross, what's the, the training that's called? I think it's hosted on the Retrieve portal, is that correct? Yeah, it's currently it's currently hosted on Retrieve. There's a whole heap of um, video content there coming out of Trimble for getting processes up and running. But also, if you go into Retrieve, there are some videos they're sort of 30 second to five minute long on each of the functions in each of the modules. So you can really get um, uh, some content there. And yeah, the, the the support ribbon in TBC in general has a whole heap of content that you can get. There's the community, the YouTube channel, um, the tutorials, the uh, most like, above all, I recommend looking at the tutorials for TBC. They're, they're very good, they're fairly, uh, they've kept up to date and they're relevant to most of the functions that you would use at a general level. Um, other than that, 
dealers in individual locations are running training sessions and looking to help get content together, um, it is a priority and something that we're aware of, but um, they're certainly the sources I'd go to at the moment. There's also yeah. the Trimble training portal, learn.trimble.com, yes. where I mean a lot of the data is from other places like YouTube and all that, but you can register on there and um, yeah, it's, it's all the data is sort of in one place, so it, it can be a lot, you know, it's a lot easier to find on there. But yeah, there are there's probably about four different um, for geospatial, there's probably four different channels that you could go to. So there's the, you know, there's the Trimble Geospatial, there's the the Trimble, the other you know, TBC ones, there's a the Real Works one. Um, yeah, so there's there's lots of stuff. There's also stuff um, from ver the various dealers around the world, um, which may be useful as well. Yeah. Um, so yeah, if you are having a look in TBC, just to, to um, wrap it back up, uh, go to the support tab, you'll find a lot of references to different web portals there, including Retrieve. Uh, the one that's being run at the moment is become a, a TBC power user or TBC expert. Um, as a local plug, uh, UPG are also running some webinars across this month. If you have a look at, um, just Google UPG solutions, April mega training, um, you'll find a series of webinars that they're hosting. And at the moment, a lot of our distribution partners are um, enacting similar um, pushes because of the limitations of being able to do face-to-face. -face. Um, for Trimble Access, if you can just uh, put down a little bit of information. Um, so that was uh, Oya Banaji, uh, apologies on my pronunciation. Um, but if you can put through a little bit of information around exactly what aspects of Trimble Access you'd like to see some more content on, um, we'll um, see what we can do. And at the moment, the, a lot of Trimble Access, because it is field related, um, is just being handled by the local distribution partner. And if you contact any of your distribution partners, they'd be able to put together a suitable training program and deliver it um, out in the field with you, which can tend to be a lot easier for field-based survey. Certainly um, on the UPG front, the content that we're putting together this month covers a whole slew of products. So it's not just TBC. We will be recording that and sharing that at a later date. but. Yeah, if you're interested, there are open sessions available to anyone that wants to come along and, and we're running them all month. Yep. Um, another thing is there's the, the actual the help portal. So that's um, help.trimblegeospatial.com, yeah, which will give you access to um, pretty much all, the whole uh, geospatial product line. And there'll be sort of these help files, these videos. Um, yeah, it's it's the content like in certain areas like Trimble Access there's a few videos but the content's not great yet but it's there's more stuff being added all the time so it's probably a good place to start and then yeah yeah and uh yeah if you fill out some more so these questions um I'll have a record of the ones coming through and um if you provide some extra information on a particular area then uh, we'll assess that and see what we can do um okay for the next question um just to mix it up with the audience of uh, hopefully Kerry's uh, up to speed. In Trimble Access, uh, we can do two-face measurements. Um, where do we find that option for making sure that two-face measurements are done during resections? Um, you'll find that defined in your survey style primarily. So if you go into the settings and survey styles, you can then set your resection uh, options there and all of your two-face from there. I think. Yeah, yep. so um, also when you're in the survey, um, you'll find that once you've hit uh, start survey and begun um, with connection and you're actually up and running, down the bottom ribbon of the Trimble Access screen, you'll see that there's a little button for options and you can select um, that it is uh, auto face left, face right. There'll be some check boxes for resection and back site. Um, and there's also a check box for whether or not you want a distance to be measured on the second face um, at times as well. So, um, yeah. That only defined for that there. job rather than every job. Yes. It should. Yeah. So, you, um, yes. Sorry, the, yeah, the default settings, it should actually 
do be measuring both phase one and phase two for a resection. But what what you normally do is you go through on the, on phase one and point to all your four points first, and then when you go end end phase, it'll, it'll continue around and do do the do measure around on phase two, and then it'll normally do three sets of that with the the default settings for a resection. Yeah, yeah. So. Um, if we hit it in options, it's just job specific. If we hit it in the uh, the survey style, it becomes a, a global change across the entire um, uh, every job that's enacted from that controller, um, which is uh, the same for a lot of these tools that you might find duplicated within the survey screen when you're actually in general survey and in the survey style that you can override them temporarily for one job, but it will only change it for that one job as well. Okay, um, where are we down to? Is it possible, I've uh, pushed this one to you James, just because you're our, our resident uh, alignments and uh, expert. Uh, is it possible to join multiple polylines in access to create a continuous alignment? Uh, should be. Um, you would need to, yeah, um, you need to select them in the right order and then, then go, um, yeah, just tap and hold. Yeah, so do it from the map, select the, the various um, polylines that you want and the order you want them joined, and then go tap and hold and go, you can go create create alignment. Okay, yeah, not some one that I've particularly tried. Um, I will mention it will be up on the, uh, at the, the last slide as we start to close out, but what I'm going to do is take these questions and um, push them onto the Trimble community forum. Um, just as a with um, under my sort of um, section there that you'd be able to search that I've posted it and um, we'll put some some text uh, against each of the questions just so in case we want to add anything further um, but we'll also send out to the the people that have posed the questions a link to that um, so they can easily capture it um, if we review these and find a bit more information later um, okay the next question we've got um, I might need a bit more information on that, Rhett, but I'll give it a crack. So exporting the right controller version for .job file from TBC. So if you are wanting to export a particular job file um, that's going to drop straight into um, a Trimble Access controller, uh, when you go to export in TBC and the survey tab, uh, you'll find the Trimble Access <coughs> exporter. When you, uh, within that menu, you'll see down in the, the bottom section of that, um, it will define the Trimble Access version. Um, something that if, if people are wanting to synchronize their data a little bit more, um, uh, I guess in a, a smoother fashion, is to use the Trimble Sync Manager and um, send that to and from the field with Sync Manager. And that will um, create, a, a set of files, you can have linked files, you can have active maps, um, feature coding libraries, anything additional that you want to be populated into the, the project as well. Um, and that's also sent from TBC and it wraps it up in a way that any 28, well, from Trimble Access 2018 onwards, controller will be able to open and visualize and, and run with. And then as a data manager, you've actually got all of the information um, encapsulated in that one synchronization sent out to the field so they don't need to link any additional files. Um, now, sorry, can I just, uh, there is a bit of a gotcha here. Um, yeah. Now, uh, so it's actually the Trimble, it's the general survey version rather than the Trimble access version. So um, from 2018.1 on, then they sort of match. So you'll get, so tw Trimble access 2018.1, the the general survey version is 18.1, uh, 2019 it's, it's 19.00. Previous to that, you'll have like, um, you'll get a number, like it was, it'll be it like started at version one and went through to a version four. So what you want to do on your Trimble Access controller to work out what version of general survey you're using is to go into the BOUT, BOUT screen and then you'll see it written beside what version of, um, general survey is running with that particular version of access. Okay. 
Uh, so there is, there's always a little gotcha in some of these things as to how they, uh, how they work. Um, I'll just, hold on one sec. I just wanted to check something else if I, because you can, um, there's another format called a JXL, a Job Exchange um, XML, and that's uh, somewhat version independent. So it would allow you to um, put a lot of things together in a similar way um, without having to worry about the exact versioning um, of the dot job file um, yep. that we can do. Yeah. yeah. So they're somewhat uh, better to use, um, I find, as well. Okay, I'll just bring up my questions panel again. Uh, where are we? There we go. Okay, um, uh, that question uh, we've already done. That's come through twice on the YouTube channels and um, that one got pushed through a second time. Um, okay, how would you go about, now I might, uh, I'll, since it sounds, Sounds like something Gareth uh, might have dealt with. Uh, you should see that popping through into your menu um, in Gareth. Um, so the question is, how would you go about creating a surface of an open cut pit with steep high walls? Problem is if you are just draping it vertically, it creates spikes in the surface. Is there any way around this or suggestions? Um, you've uh, dealt a little bit with this, um, I believe, Gareth. And how to play around? Yeah, that mate. Yeah, yeah. Had a couple of mining guys in for some training, so I gave them a few options. So you had straight, straight down cookie cups. The the typical way people make services. There's probably a couple of other options. You can define in plane manager in TBC, like if you, if you rotate your line work or which way you'd like to uh, generate a service. So say as you're looking at a wall, or 45 degrees is generally a good rule of thumb. And you can create the surface base down on that angle. That's probably so. If you've got a whole pit, that'll just work for one section of a wall. Um, if you want to get a bit fancier, then you've got what's called projected surfaces. Um, went through this on the in the pug in in Melbourne. We um, you're basically creating a surface based on alignment. So there's a few. You can make a dummy alignment, or if you've already got an alignment, you sort of make a follow a toe string like to your base floor and then, yeah, we can probably put this one up on the forum with a few steps on how to do this actually, but yeah, there's, there's a way you can just use the alignment and make a projected service based off that with a few, few different options you can select there. Yeah, so um, it was probably in about version five, uh, there was a few additional surface um, building uh, options within TBC. Um, uh, rather than just the vertical drape, the projected drapes, although you would need to uh, project onto each of the walls, um, you wouldn't have one continuous surface, but also there is a function for radial surface, which can deal with some of these steep cuttings and as Gareth mentioned, they're alignment related. Um, okay, so we've got a little bit more information um, just around the, uh, where someone was asking about the roving precision versus the um, the topo point precision. Um, so just from one of my colleagues, um, he said that um, it is specific a little bit to some of the RTX function as well. It sets a convergent threshold. Um, and then a bit more, he's also said it should only be available on the HD GNSS receivers. Um, and once you are within that, then you get the green light that you have reached the convergence threshold. Um, so quite a specific function in there, um, but I'll, uh, I'll wrap these comments together and um, we can continue part of that on the, um, on the forum as well as we start to get more in depth if we've missed the mark on what uh, I thought the question was relating to. Okay. Um, that would be the, so that would be like a initialization threshold. Yes. Yeah. 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 Um, is it possible to get FXL controlled attributes to remain associated with line stream given theta region? Uh, Ross, I'll push this one to you since you've been doing a lot with FXLs at the moment. Just have a look at that and I'll just uh, check on a couple more down and push them through. Um, 
getting to to the next year's thing? Um, look, in terms of uh, that's going to be a file format um, issue. So if you're dropping, oh, do you want me to read the question out? Actually, oh um, uh, yes, sorry. Is it possible yeah, to get yeah. the FXL controlled attribute to remain uh, with line strings in a DWG export from TBC? Uh, that would be a file format issue. So I think that it should be able to in a DWG handle attributes. Um, so I don't know why they will be falling off if you are exporting. So it depends on also what you're opening the, the DWG in, um, how that gets handled. But we generally do support all of that functionality um, for line strings and attributes associated with them once you've processed the um, FXL against the points. Um, okay, so Okay, a second one coming in from David. I have a TBC project with coordinate system and project settings. When I bring in field data from Survey Controller with same coordinate and project settings via trim via access into TBC, I'm prompted to keep Survey Controller definition or keep existing TBC project definition. Of course, I want to keep the TBC definition. Um, so one thing that uh, usually get set in Trimble access is within the project setup, you'll define a project elevation. And what this gets used for is if you are Kogo doing a, a, an inverse, um, one of the Kogo functions between two points, and one of the points is uh, three dimensional, so it has a height as well, and one is only two dimensional, then we use that project elevation uh, so that we can resolve a combined scale factor at both ends of the inverse. Now, in TBC, generally, um, not everybody sets a local site, which would define the um, the the height. Um, and as it comes in, even though you might have the exact same um, datum definition, this project height creates um, a trigger to display that um, or even if um, the, the geoid has a slightly different naming convention, it will also um, trigger that to come up. Um, so if you click on details um, within that, it will actually bring up a little HTML report and it highlights the exact component that is differing just so that you can see um, and review what's going on there. And usually it's something small like the way that um, uh, Access is is utilising that um, project elevation. It could be something just like could just be a fraction of a millimetre difference, and you'll still get that error. So, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, okay, I'll just read through. Uh, Exactly how to read this. Uh, I'll just um, push this to you, Neil, to have a read through, and I'll jump to one of the next ones for a second. Um, working in and with customers for quite a bit. Oh, I'll avoid uh, Mike Stump. You've put one in there regarding Works Manager. Um, I think we'll follow it up on that one in a um in the forum or i might engage with one of the um construction guys or um, ross might be able to field this but um we're trying to focus around the geospatial products for this um because yeah out of the the larger group it's probably only ross that really touches sometimes on works manager so we'll um we'll we'll track through that we'll, we'll pull uh, that offline if you can send that to me i'll i'll uh i'll deal with it offline and we'll get um someone to give you the answer to that yeah yep okay um we've got a question here that um i'll jump into what is the difference between rtk and logging and rtk and infill um so when you start a survey with RTK and logging, uh, you're getting your RTK fix and um, precisions in the field, and the entire survey is being used, uh, is being logged as well. So you'll get a, a depending on the, the receiver model, a T0 something file, uh, usually T02 or T04 these days. Um, 
and that will give you a complete record of the entire survey. If you choose RTK and infill, then you will only trigger the logging to occur once you drop your RTK connection. So then those components of the survey that haven't um, that haven't been connected on RTK will effectively become like a PPK survey. So they'll have um, they'll have the logging information just to infill that, and then you would need to um, take that through to Trimble Business Centre and post process the infill sections. Um, that sounds good to to the experts. Sounds logical to me. Complete yes, silence. I must have nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so I'll assign this to Ross. He's going to have a look at. Okay, Ross. Uh, no, Neil. I assigned on to you. So, did you have a quick review? Have a think about that one. Do you think? Uh, yeah, I'll I'll just summarise the question, which is a specific data issue uh, a customer had. Uh, he set up on a point and he's mixed up the back site and foresight point names, and then he's continued on. So it sounds like the survey is probably orientated incorrectly. Um, once again, without seeing the data, can't be 100% what this looks like, but we can edit the point names. TBC is the best place to do this if possible. Um, so if we bring in a survey and we find that we've got wrong observations to back sites, four sites, et cetera, essentially the back site's gonna be the key point. So if the back site point name can be edited and correct coordinates put in, this could change the orientation of everything. Uh, once again, this data set, um, don't know what it looks like. Um, there was also an example on the TBC Power Hour last week where um, Robert Martin from NEI went through some samples and this sounds very much like one that he went through. So this may be on online already on last week's TBC Power Hour from Robert Martin. Um, if my brief answer doesn't help you, it's probably best to get this data set. I'm sure we can fix it up if, um, if there's enough information in the job to go ahead and fix it. Okay. Uh, now, where did I push this one through to? Um, there's one here that's uh, related to uh, connecting Windows mobile devices, and in this case specifically a TSC3 um, to Windows 10 PCs. Um, and they've tried running patches to uh, fix a registry and um, Anything else? Um, I flick that to Neil. Uh, do you want to have a go? And then probably the only thing to mention is uh, the versions of the operating system on mobile. Yeah, okay. So if one TSC3 is working and one is not, do we have an issue with a USB port potentially? Um, but also there is one setting on the TSC3s which lets you change between uh, a storage mode and the way that the USB works. Now, I don't have a TSC3 in front of me. It may be one of the guys on screen can remember how to get to that window setting to change that mode that changes the USB connection method. Uh, off the top of my head, I believe you go into the window settings and then into connections and then into USB and there's a tick box, but I don't have one in front of me either. Yeah, th that's exactly right. Maybe we'll just put this on um, the answers, Shep. Um, Kerry's got it. It's a tick box under Windows and Settings. Has James, have you just grabbed a TSC3, have you? Yeah, it's flat though. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's, let's put the answer for that one on, on Community and move on with that one. Okay. Um, yeah, I think you're right though. Um, and yeah, I mean, the, the power module, so we're basically talking about that part oops, of the, they do fail and so if it's working on one and it's not working on the other then it could be that the power boot has failed and you it'll need to go to your dealer to get a replacement um you know if they're both set the same otherwise it's in it's in settings um is advanced settings and there's um there's actually there's uh, actually a document yeah, on it somewhere it's online settings yeah and uh enable usb advanced mode or not and you can trigger that yeah. to enable or disable and uh for whatever reason, sometimes enabling works and sometimes disabling. Um, it's 
Windows 10 related as to what preference it has, depending on different builds it appears to be. Um, so um, we're rounding out right to the hour now. Um, the questions we didn't get to, um, since you've registered for this webinar, um, we'll have a record of your email on that. Um, I'll be posting the questions on a Trimble community forum and we'll ping the people that have posed them uh, with a link and we'll endeavour to answer those questions as we can. Um, apologies if we didn't get to your questions. Um, it seems to have worked okay for most of these that uh, even though it was a verbal response, um, without screen sharing, we seem to have gotten through quite a few of them. Um, so for any questions that we didn't get to, um, look out for um, an email uh, relating to the um, Trimble community forum um, or have a search in there and you should be able to find it. Um, just search for me in the forum um, or search for maybe Ask the Experts part one. Um, and um, if it's, uh, if it's not there, then just remember to engage with your local Trimble distribution partner. Um, for the Australian New Zealand region, that's Altera New Zealand, UPG or um, HL Geospatial. Um, and for those of you patching in a little bit more broadly, then uh, uh, if you're not aware of who that is, um, have a look at the Trimble Locate a Dealer um, part of the website. If you search for that, it should bring up a map of where you can find your local distribution partner. Um, and yeah, thanks everybody for attending. Thanks for the uh, the experts. Apologies, uh, we sort of, uh, if if you didn't get to, to voice anything, uh, feel free to jump in and uh, and go for it on the, the forum. Thank you, everyone. All right. Thanks, Jeff. This is us uh, thanks, signing everyone. off. Um, Thanks, Chef. And, uh, thank you. Look forward to talking to you soon and uh, chatting to you on the forum. Cheers, guys. Have a good day.